to talk here about Kenneth Burke's very interesting essay in here called Psychology and Form from his book Counterstatement. And one of the ways to get at this is to understand that Burke was concerned with the kinds of information that art conveys rather than the kinds of information that science conveys. That is, artistic kinds of information oftentimes allow for a, a repetition and they tolerate a kind of repetition because the what he calls the psychology of information is different than the psychology of form. See, this is sort of Burke's orientation. Now, I think one way to get at this is to think about how Burke understands the notion of, say, Greek tragedy or even Greek mythology. I'm not sure if people are familiar with it, but there's a famous story of Perseus, and Perseus is a hero who's able to slay the Medusa, and he slays the Medusa by this uh, shield and the sword that the gods have given him. And he goes in, and if you look at the Medusa, you turn to stone. I think people know this story. He goes in to these caves, and he's able to see the Medusa's reflection in the shield, and then he slays uh, the Medusa without having to actually uh, face her head on. Burke interprets this as the shield... I guess represents the poem or the piece of art by the artist. It allows us to face our demons in a kind of reflection where if we would face them head on, sort of just, I guess, in a more direct fashion, we turn to stone, but there's a capacity to use symbolic forms, artistic forms, in particular narratives, myths, stories, to give us information with a little bit of an arm's distance and to face our problems, which then become a kind of catharsis, right? There's a cathartic effect, right? When you watch, if you happen to watch stuff like television shows, if you watch, I don't know, these really popular shows, uh, The Simpsons, or Everybody Loves Raymond, or uh, Two and a Half Men, I don't know, these kinds of shows that are on, you have to understand what's going on inside the show, but the show is really satisfying the concerns and appetites of the audience, and it has a cathartic effect. So much of the scenarios that are going on are their typical scenarios or their gross illustrations. They're sort of the reflections you'd see in a funhouse mirror of recurrent social problems that then when we see them worked out on stage, it has a sort of cathartic effect. Well, at any rate, Burke in this wonderful essay, he talks about form. And what he says is form is this, right? He says, form is the creation of an appetite in the mind of the auditor and the adequate satisfying of that appetite. This satisfaction, so complicated is the human mechanism, at times involves a temporary set of frustrations, but in the end, these frustrations prove to be simply a more involved kind of satisfaction and furthermore serve to make the satisfaction of fulfillment more intense. Right? He says, if in a work of art, the poet says something, let us say about a meeting, writes in such a way that we desire to observe that meaning, and then he places that meaning before us, that is form. So yeah, I think his point here is that the kind of information that is conveyed in art isn't often just new information, stuff that you don't yet know. See, this is what he would call um, the psychology of information. Whereas for him, the psychology of form is to realize that some of the things that are said, some things that look maybe like their information, aren't trying to give you anything. They're trying to build in desire and they're to whet the appetite to feed into the desires that are naturally there and then ultimately to create the kind of obstacles and frustrations that can be satisfied to give that fulfillment. Um, what Burke is going to say is that in our age of information explosion, we have become less and less observant of and tolerant to the psychology of form. He says here, and he quotes, this is a quote from Burke. Burke says, proposition, the hypertrophy of the psychology of information 
is accompanied by the corresponding atrophy of the psychology of form. I think his point here is that people are in so rushed and such a hurry that they now think of everything in terms of information. And it's, I think it's part of the reason why people have difficulty understanding some forms of art where the, the drama is an inbuilding, right? You're not trying to convey information directly. You're trying to create desires that then get satisfied. I mean, for Burke, he would say, you know, why is it that music is most well suited to form rather than to information? He says music is fitted less than any other art for imparting information because it deals minutely in frustrations and fulfillments, right? He says, and for that reason, more often give us those curves of emotion which, because they are natural, can bear repetition without loss, right? He says, um, a lullaby is a melody which comes quickly to rest where the obstacles are easily overcome, and this is precisely the parallel to those waking dreams of struggle and conquest which, especially during childhood, we permit ourselves when falling asleep or when trying to induce sleep. Folk tales are just such walking dreams. Again, Burke is giving such wonderful insights here about learning how to reread and understand the great myths of the ages. We don't want to necessarily reread them to gain new information as if there was something that we haven't yet heard and its value is because we now know it, whereas we didn't before. There instead is a whole different tradition of art and understanding of different kinds of information which deals with form and the inbuilding of form and the playing of appetites and that kind of art allows for repetition. It, it doesn't degrade in its value while it's being repeated and this I think is again such an important concept for Burke. Okay, thanks. <laughs>